Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited you're here. I wanted to do this free workshop today because I have been getting a lot of messages from moms who are feeling overwhelmed and on the verge of burning out. And guess what? This is a very common thing nowadays. Everyone is just uh, juggling too many things, spinning too many plates, and everyone is just feeling exhausted and overwhelmed. Hi, Erica. Glad you're here. All right, you guys. So I wanted to share a few things with you guys. And the reason is because I've been there. I know how it feels to be absolutely overwhelmed. I know what it is to burn out completely. For some of you who don't know my story, but four years ago, I burned out so badly. I end up at the hospital multiple times. And the last time we had to call 911 because I was having chest pains. I, I was paralyzed from head to toe. I couldn't move anything for three and a half hours. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move. I couldn't respond to anything. I had no control over my body. Um, and I ended up spending the night in critical care at the hospital only to find out the very next morning that what I had was a major panic attack. So I don't take lightly when somebody emails me or message me and say, I've been feeling overwhelmed and I'm starting to feel depressed and I feel like there's, I, I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and there's too many things uh, on my hands right now on my plates and I don't know how to get rid of them. I don't know where to begin. I don't know how to simplify my life and how to say no. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of reasons why we actually end up overwhelmed. Part of it, yes, it's because we don't know how to say no. We just keep adding up to our plates. Um, but I think that the bottom of line is that when we don't know how to establish healthy boundaries in our lives and we end up saying yes to too many things that we weren't even not even called to do, right? But we were saying yes and we we're just adding it up. So guys, just quickly, can you say hello? So I know that you're there. Just uh, quickly, just comment, say hello, and let me know where you are, and uh, let me know why you decided to watch this free workshop. Are you feeling overwhelmed right now? Do you feel you're spinning too many plates at the same time? Just let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear from you guys. I see Erica's here. Let me see. I'm trying to see all the comments here. Oh, let, let me see. See if I can get the comments. Sometimes I can see straight on my screen. Okay. So Erica is in Bishop, California. We love California. We had so much fun in California a few weeks ago. So that's exciting to know. And you started, you started homeschooling last semester. Yay. There we go. You're homeschooling now. So I know that, you know, oops, sorry. My husband is calling me. Just one second, you guys. Hey, I'm doing a Facebook Live. I'll call you back. Okay. <laughs> Don't you guys love when those things happen? This is reality TV, guys. And he should know better. He should know better. So, yeah, um, I'm really excited, Erica, that now you're homeschooling. And you know that homeschooling adds a whole lot of load to a mom's uh, job, right? So Melanie is saying hello from Florence, Texas. Hello, Texas. And Kelly is saying it's too easy to get overwhelmed. It's hard to get the boundaries in place. Yes and yes. It's too easy to get overwhelmed, you guys. Um, things don't get overwhelmed overnight, okay? It doesn't happen overnight. We get overwhelmed after a series of little things that we add up to our lives. And we're like, yeah, sure, I can do this. Yeah, sure, I have space in my calendar. Yeah, sure, I can take one more. And then when you notice you're just carrying so much weight on your shoulders, that you, you can't actually stretch your back anymore, right? Monica is saying hi from San Diego. Hi, California. Um, looks like there's lots of Californians in the house. So um, I always compare any task or anything. Kentucky, Lachelle's from Kentucky. Hey, Lachelle, good to see you, girl. Um, 
it, I always compare, you know, what we do every day and, and the tasks that we put in our agenda, the tasks that we put in our schedule as just adding a, uh, like a rock to our backs. Okay. So you, uh, Hey, Connecticut. Hey, Debbie. Um, so you think about those big rocks that we already have carry on our shoulders, right? So we got this big rock of that is called house chores, managing a house, keeping it clean, cooking. Uh, then we got a, another huge bulldozer. <laughs> we got a huge, a huge uh, rock called homeschool um, for most of us. So we are we are homeschooling multiple children, multiple grades. Like here in our house, it's grade uh, two, five, uh, uh, two, four, and five right it's soon to be three five and six so that's another huge huge rock that we're carrying on i'm carrying on my shoulders and then i work from home so that's another big one for me okay i know i know listen you guys either you work from home or you work outside or you don't work at all you're working because moms have no break moms have no break moms are working 24 7 you know that the work never ends so we're carrying all of those uh, big rocks on our shoulders, right? It's the house, the kids, um, the homeschool. And, and then some of us are involved with ministry at the church. Anybody here serving in ministry at the church? Anybody involved with Sunday school, worship uh, ministry, uh, pastoral ministry, or any kind of ministry at all, or volunteering? any other place is anybody involved with uh, volunteering or a ministry i'm gonna seek my tea that my seven-year-old just made for me she's so cute you guys look how cute this is she brings in the, in the little cup and sauce oh she's super cute and they brought me some apple bread too Okay, so Sarah is saying me, she she is a, a children's ministry leader. Monica is saying she teaches first to third grade uh, Sunday school. Erica, pre-K, right? So that's another big, big, heavy load on your shoulders. Those are like those big, big rocks that you're carrying on your shoulder. And then you guys, I'm pretty sure you committed to other little things too, right? So those just adding even more weight. So what happened is you okay carrying wine. Melanie's saying I help with our children's ministry and I was a leader for, our, for your, the VBS this year. That's so cool. So what happened is you're carrying all those big, big, heavy um, rocks on your shoulder. And you got the first one. Okay, and you're like, oh, I'm okay with that. I can handle more. I can handle more. So then you got you, you go and you get another wine. And you're like, okay, I can handle two, kind of balance each other, right? Balance each other. I can do that. And, and then you just keep adding little things. And let me tell you, the little things actually wear you down more than the big things. The little things normally will wear you down more than the big things, okay? Because normally the little things are the spreaded things, the things that you can't really control much, um, but they are adding to the weight on your shoulders. So it's very easy for us to get overwhelmed as um, who said that? I think it was Kelly. Kelly has said that. It's, it's, very, uh, it's very easy for us to get overwhelmed. But listen to me. If you want to get rid of overwhelm, you need to learn to put some healthy boundaries in your life. And it's okay to say no when you're feeling overwhelmed. And it's okay for you to, you know, decide. Uh, my kids are trying to sneak out of the room. So <laughs> it's so funny. What do you need, Hadassah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's okay uh, for you to establish that for this season where you're already feeling overwhelmed, that you're going to say no to a few things and you're going to just establish some boundaries. Listen, you guys, one of the best things I've done. For myself and my family i was just sharing this with lisa um uh, one of the moms in our community hey kim and hi debbie <laughs> and uncle bruno saying hi hadassah so i was just sharing this in a call i was just in a call with my friend uh with lisa she's one of the moms in our community and she was having one of those days where she was feeling overwhelmed so 
anyway, so I, um, Lisa and I, we were just uh, chatting with each other. We got into a video call. Hey, Suzanne. And, you know, we were just talking about the importance of learning to say no to things without thinking, what will other people think? And it's completely okay. If you feel like you are, you're in a seat, thank you for the tea, it's delicious. If you are in a season where you're feeling already that your plates are full, there's no shame in saying no to people and saying, listen, I would love to do this. But right now, I feel like my plate is full and I want to make sure that I'm giving the attention that each thing that I already have in my, in my, on my plate need, especially my children and my family. And I would love to do this later on, but I cannot say yes now. It's totally okay. Totally okay. You should never feel bad for saying no to anything. And you should never feel bad. And I was going to say this, like the best thing I have ever done for my family and for myself was that three years or four years ago, I decided I was going to clear my calendar. And I had just come out of this big, you know, burned out where I had to go on medical leave. And I had, I had to step down from my position as a, a full-time pastor, as a, an assistant pastor. And I knew it that the way to heal my body and to heal my brain, to heal everything that was happening was by clearing my calendar. So I said no to co-ops. I said no to extracurricular classes for the kids. I said no to any involvement in ministry during that time. I didn't become a heathen, guys. You know, it is totally okay to say, hey, I'm not going to serve this semester in children's ministry. I'm not going to serve this semester with a Bible study because I've been feeling really exhausted and overwhelmed and I just need to regroup with my family, with myself. I need a time of healing and rest. I need a sabbatical. So it's totally okay to do that. So when I did that, actually, it was phenomenal for our family in so many ways. It was phenomenal. It was fantastic for, for myself because my body was rested. My mind was rested. I didn't feel like I had to get in the car and go places all the time just to keep up with all the, the appointments and the commitments. And for my family, we spent a lot more quality time together that year than we ever did before. It was amazing. I could actually lay down in bed for 30 minutes and listen to an audiobook or a podcast or just take a nap without feeling guilty. Because I think that the problem is that we're so worried about how will people see that if you say no or how will people take it that even if you do it, you don't enjoy it. So you need to take that guilt off your shoulder. You need to take that guilt off your shoulder. And you need to know that what you're doing is the best for you and the best for your family. And the best for your family will always be to invest on yourself, on your self-care, on your mental health, on your physical health. It, it will always be the best thing to do it. Because when you're well, you're serving your family well. When you're well, you're, you're serving your community well right? You're doing your work better. You're, you're paying more attention to your marriage. You're paying more attention to your children. And, and you're, you're paying attention to the cues of your body when, you know, the wisdom of your body, when you know that something is not working well, right? So that's very important. So now that I kind of like, um, Kim is saying, we say no to a lot. And, and it's true. Here's something that I've learned, you guys. Um, when I burned out completely, I read a book called The Best Yes, and I can share on the link here later on um, in the comments. But this book from Lisa Turkish uh, taught me and like this one thing that she said, like many things that she said, of course, I've learned from it. But this one thing that she said stuck to me forever. She said, she said, not every opportunity is your assignment. Okay, I'm going to say this again. I want you guys to write it down. Let it sink in. Not every opportunity is your assignment. That goes for everything, including your homeschool. That goes for ministry as well. Not every opportunity is your assignment. 
Here's the thing. We think that every opportunity that comes our way, we have this what we call FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. That if we don't take it, we're missing something. In reality, we might actually causing other people to miss what they were called to do because we were not. <laughs> we're just there because we just, you know, we're just uh, being impulsive and, and trying to do one more thing. But it is a mind blown gem, Erica. It is. So ne not every opportunity is your assignment. And you need to know that not ever. I'm going to turn off my phone here because it keeps beeping. Not every opportunity is your kid's assignment either. You don't need to do everything with them. You don't need to sign up for every class. You don't need to sign up for every sport. Come on, you guys, we got to get this out of your system, especially you Americans. You know, they don't need like we've never done sports in our lives and we all grew up well. We all got scholarships for, for college. I've never paid anything for my college, actually. 70 years in college, you guys, uh, two degrees. But, you know, we, we got to stop thinking that we need to fill our schedules packed. Otherwise, we're not being productive. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Okay? That is a lie from the pit of hell. You actually want to be wiser than anybody else. And you want to create white margins in your calendar. So you can be a sane person. So you can have a great relationship with your husband, a great relationship with your children. So you're not breaking down. You're not overwhelmed. Okay? So we need to stop with this mentality that filling up your calendar makes you productive or makes you look like you're productive because that's a lie from the pit of hell. Okay. So you got to stop with this idea that your kids need to be involved in every single thing and they need to be scheduled all day because, oh, what am I going to do if they're not? Our kids desperate need to learn a master in activity. This is where creativity comes from. This is where observation comes from. Okay. This is where learning really happens. It's when they are not told what to do, when, when they are actually doing things for themselves, when they are playing pretend, when they are creating, when they are reading a book, when they are just resting. They need to learn those things now. All right, one second. Okay, guys, get up and going. Ariella, before you get to the bedroom, you need a plate. <laughs> You're all crawling on the floor trying to get to the other side. Not that we live in a very big place. But those things are very important for us to understand, you guys. The other thing is, Doug, if your kids see you super busy all the time with no time to give them attention, guess how they're going to grow up to be? Monkey see, monkey do, right? So we need to set an example. We need to set an example. We need to set an, exa an example that when family is together, that we all sit on the table together and we have conversations together and we can look each other in the eye and not look down to devices or not look to the television. And we can actually have connection as a family. That's so important. So important. We have some tech off days in our house that my kids like last week, the whole week, no technology for the kids, no TV, no screens, nothing. They had a blast building forts, playing games. And they just told me right now, because actually they were, they were not watching TV uh, today. And they just told me right now that they actually doing language arts. And I said, what do you mean by doing language arts? I'm not doing language arts with you. It's we're playing Scrabble. <laughs> so that is language arts. Um, that's when they really get creative. And so do we. When we have time to think about things, we got to enjoy life better. We got to be creative. It's so important. Like, I think it's so important that we have a hobby to keep our sanity. <laughs> I think it's so important. Like I do my Bible journaling. I, I like to lay down and listen to audiobooks. Like I'm always listening to a, a lot of audiobooks. I love that. But I need my time to do it. I need to fill my mind and fill my my soul and my spirit with good things that will overflow out of me into my children, into my marriage, into my community, the community that I serve. It's so important. 
All right. So we're talking about being overwhelmed. We're talking about that we need to learn to say no. We need to establish healthy boundaries, right, in our lives. And we're talking about the importance of uh, creating margin in your calendar. It's so important to create margin in your calendar. But I want to get into the point of simplifying your life because I believe that simplifying your life is a major key to give you that breathing room and that peace again. Okay. So I want to I want to talk about a few things, and I got my notes here, so you guys bear with me. Um, I want to talk about something that constantly comes back to me. Um, I see moms overwhelmed all the time asking me questions. How do you handle it all? Well, first of all, I don't handle it all. I am really good at outsourcing a lot of things in my life because I like to simplify. I cannot spin more than two plates at the same time. Okay, that's me. I can switch plates, plates but I cannot do everything at the same time. So that's another good lesson to you. None of us can do everything at the same time. All of us can do everything, but not at the same time. There's something called priorities that need to take place. Remember when we talked about the big rocks at the beginning of this, this workshop? We need to know what our big rocks are. Those are the things that we need to focus our attention on. The little ones that cripple in the middle are the ones that are creating, that are blocking. Okay, and try to imagine this. Have you guys ever seen a video about the um, the rocks? Um, how do you call it? How do you call it? How do you call it? Okay, so there is this video. There's this illustration where there's like this guy with a, with a jar, and then he puts all the big rocks first, right? No, he puts all the little rocks first, and then he's trying to fit the big rocks into it, and the big rocks don't fit into it. So then he dumps everything out, and what he does is he fits the big rocks first, okay? Then the little rocks come in. He throws the little, little rocks in, and now it fits, right? But then, like, there's life that happens, and there's water that is poured, and, and oil, whatever it is that is poured into the jar, and the jar just gets full to the brim. That's our life. That's our life, okay? But I want you to pay attention to the little rocks because while you have the big rocks inside that jar, there's space for the air to flow. Does that make sense? Can you see the visual? There is space for air and air to breathe, air to live life, air to not be overwhelmed. And the more little rocks we add to it, then it cuts off the air. And that's when we feel suffocated. That's when we feel overwhelmed. That's when we feel like I need to dig dig out of this because I feel like I'm in a hole and I'm suffocating here, right? Okay, so I wanna quickly just talk about 10 easy ways to simplify your life so you can actually have more breathing room. So the first one that I wanna talk about is Stop trying to organize your mess, your life, and start decluttering it. Stop trying to organize your mess, your life, your house, your closet that is over, like overflowing. Start decluttering. The secret is not to organize because when things, when you have more than you're supposed to, it will get messy. When you have more clothes than you're supposed to, your closet will get messy. It will not stay organized. Um, if you have more utensils and things in your kitchen that, than you need to, your kitchen cabinets and drawers will get messy because there's too many things. It's hard to actually find things. So people mess it up to find things. And it's the same way in our lives. So clutter is extra stuff that have been accumulated and and most of the time are not actually serving us well we're not benefiting from it okay so if you have things that you're benefiting from it that's great but if there's some things in your life that are just going to make you overwhelmed then what's the point in keeping it it's time for a change it's time to cut it off it's time for pruning so you can actually bloom so you need to learn to declutter your life, declutter your house. Guys, it's huge. 
when we moved out of our big house into 366 square feet uh square foot um rv we got rid of 90 percent of everything that we had easily 90 percent of everything that we had and yet months into living here we were decluttering again because we still noticed that there were things that we were not using and they were just occupying space when you look at your calendar when you look at your day at the end of the day do you feel like there is a lot more things just occupied occupying space than actually benefiting you that you actually using it well do you feel like that because if you do maybe it's time to declutter maybe it's time to cut some things off so when i had this experience i had this experience with my calendar but then when i had this experience with my home it just made so much sense that one we tend to accumulate things that we don't need we tend to accumulate more than we need and we tend to accumulate things that are useless for us useless so think about those things so my first tip is try to or don't try to organize your mess or your life or your schedule just try to get rid of the excess that it's causing you to be overwhelmed uh, my tip number two is do less so you can accomplish more do less so you can accomplish more one of the best things that i did for my children, for my family, for our homeschool, was to teach my kids the habit of attention and perfect execution. And I've learned so much from it because my entire life, I just heard people saying like, pay attention, but nobody ever taught me what pay attention means. And, and it means to put the full force of your mind in what you have in your hands right now. And this is something that this generation is lacking so hugely right don't even know if that sounds right grammarly <laughs> in such a big way our generation is missing this it's lacking this because we've been so overwhelmed we're being uh, trying to pay attention to too many things and we're not paying attention to none none not we're not even paying attention to ourselves or to our house properly or to our children or to our marriage we're just lacking in every possible area because we cannot pay attention fully the full force of our mind and what we have in our hands when we have 10 things in our hands right does that make sense can anybody relate to it just get you know just i want to hear some amens and i want to i want to i want to just know that you guys can relate to what i'm saying that i'm not the only person that deals with that because every day in this community i hear from people who are saying i'm overwhelmed i'm overwhelmed and i need to find a way out of this right i know camber is saying easily overwhelmed with everyone's activities kim saying this <laughs> this evangeline saying so true yes michelle same here and uh michelle says she's learning to to handle stress better renee is saying it is oppressive it is oppressive it is oppressive you feel like there's no peace there's no joy because you're just suffocated right michelle saying she so can relate she just feels super overwhelmed right now so you guys we need to do less in order to do life better and that goes for our homeschool big big time big big time we're gonna get to the homeschool in a little bit but i find that you know if you follow those two simple things decluttering just cutting off every excess of everything like physically emotionally um you know tasks in your calendars and commitments and and just start doing less than you were doing before you're gonna you know the overwhelm will be just lift off your shoulders and you're gonna start feeling like you're actually accomplishing much more than when you were trying to do 10 things at the same time so i was talking about paying attention the importance of paying attention and how we don't know how to do that in our generation and as moms it feels like there's so much pressure in, on us for being multitask that 
you know, we are actually not paying attention to our family, as I mentioned before, our, our marriage and our children. And there is nothing that our children need more than a fully present rest aid mom. I don't know about you, but if I'm not rest aid, I'll be snapping on people. And my children will be the first one to get snaps from me. Okay? So let's just be honest. When we are stressed out, when we are overwhelmed, we tend to yell on our children. We are impatient. We are unkind. And the people that we love the most suffer because we allow ourselves to get to a place where we are overwhelmed. I don't think our children deserve that. And I don't think we're being a good example to them if we're doing those things. And big time guilty here, you guys. Big time. I used to cry myself to sleep thinking how horrible I treated my kids because I was so overwhelmed. I was so exhausted. I was so stressed out. They need a fully rested, present, happy mommy. They need that. And we own this to them. Okay. So we know that we can't do everything. So we need to have priorities. We need to have those big rocks. Um, very clear in our lives. We know what we need to focus our full attention and energy on. We need to choose well what we say yes to. Remember, not every opportunity is your, uh, not every assignment is your opportunity. Um, aim to do two or three things well, never 10. Two or three things well, never 10. Learn to say no. That's very important that you have this healthy boundaries and now i want to get into like things that are specific um about simplifying your homeschool and i'm sure you're also going to get ideas from other areas as well but there are things like i said those important rocks in in our homeschool day that need to get done those are the important daily subjects that they're i call them non-negotiable okay and for us in our home it's bible language arts and math Bible, language, arts, and math. If I don't do history for a while, if I don't do science for a while, it's okay. I can always catch up later. And I'll tell you exactly how I do this because it's actually a really fun way to catching up with homeschool subjects and my kids love it. So if I am feeling overwhelmed, I will stick to those three things every day. Bible, language, arts, math. Even if it's for an hour a day, okay? Then whatever I'm not doing for science or for history or geography for a while, what I do is when I feel that I, I caught up already and I feel better because I'm only doing three things every day with them and everybody's breathing and every, everybody's relaxed, then I do a what I call a history camp week or a science camp week. So that week I focus only on doing one subject. That's it. And I, I catch up with all the chapters that I missed those weeks before trying to whew, breathe and get my life back in order. And it's so much fun because what kid will not celebrate when you say we're not doing math this week or we're not doing language arts this week? And you just make that a fun, fun week. Catching up with science or catching up with history, right? So that always worked really well for our families. And I love teaching this to other moms because I, I see them like using now and they're like, you are so right. It does make a big difference. I was feeling overwhelmed and I thought I had to do Latin and Shakespeare music and, and art and everything every day. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. You guys, you don't have to do everything every day. Keep the basics. Add one or two more things as you feel like you can handle. And when you can't, keep on those three things and then do a full week of science, do a full week of uh, history. On Fridays in our house, we call it Fun Fridays, okay? So, fun, so Fridays are basically uh, the days that we do all of those other subjects that we don't get to do during the week. <laughs> That's our nature walk, our nature study. That's when we do arts. That's when we do poetry. That's when we do Shakespeare. That's when we do... Latin, or whatever we're doing, 
okay whatever we want to or that's when we do like fun unit studies that my kids have been really asking for like let's learn about shark you know so fun fridays that's when we add those things i cannot possibly do those things from monday to friday and cover them all that would be just crazy right just crazy so stop thinking that you need to do everything every day Okay, that's another lie from the pit of hell. <laughs> I'm just here to deliver you guys from all those lies. And I hope that this is going to be really useful for you. So do the non-negotiable subjects every day, Bible, language, arts, and math. Okay. In the morning, if you have the custom to do a morning basket, a read aloud, I read to my children every day. If I cannot read to my children, there is an audiobook playing while everyone is eating. So somehow try to add, you know, or, or a memory work. We do a memory work. You guys, you've got to check this out. It's called Clarita's um, Memory Work. And we do, it takes about six or seven minutes every day. Six or seven minutes every day. That's it. I don't even need to do it. I put it on my phone, put it on the TV for the kids, and they do it. And it covers um, scripture grammar math science history geography timeline him and latin nine subjects in six to seven minutes every single morning with my kids does that make me overwhelmed no do my kids learn a ton doing this yes and he got into part it's part of our our morning routine that's how we start our school. And when I say morning routine, sometimes we start school here at one in the afternoon. Let me tell you, I am not like, I'm not like, okay, nine o'clock sharp. No, sometimes nine o'clock I'm staying back. And I have no shame in saying this because I know my body's limitation and I know when my body needs rest. Right now I'm recovering from surgery. I had surgery Monday, uh, Sunday, you know? So whatever time we start, it's, it's the clue that the day is starting for our learning time. So we do our memory work together. It does cover scriptures. We do read scriptures. We do uh, dive. You can. It gives you the chance actually to dive deep into the subjects. It gives you the, the hyperlinks. You just have to click and watch the videos. It's awesome. And the way that we do it is through Cross 7. So my friend Laura Jim from Cross 7, she created the videos for the memory works. And you can sign up for like $11 a month, which doesn't break the bank at all. And it, all you do is put the videos for the kids to watch every morning for six, seven minutes. And amazing, amazing transformation in our homeschool since we start doing this. Best thing we ever did this year, actually. Best change we did to our homeschool this year. So those are the things that you want to do every day that are not overwhelming to you. They are basic things that they need to do. All right. Um, when it comes to language arts, we talked about doing language arts every day, right? So I want you guys to understand that language arts doesn't have to be, I have to do writing, spelling, vocabulary, grammar every single day. No, you can take turns doing those things. You don't need to do all of them every single day as part of your language arts. So today we will do spelling and tomorrow we'll work on our grammar and then the day after we're going to work on our writing and we kind of take a loop schedule going through it okay so that's lisa saying me too adrenal fatigue i do have adrenal fatigue i have hashimoto's and it, it just it, it um knocks me off really badly sometimes that i can't get to bed i can't get out of bed very early so make sure that you can take turns doing that loop for your language arts as well don't feel like um you need to do everything okay take turns doing it your kids are going to be fine at the end of the year trust me trust me they're all going to be writing they're all going to be reading they're all going to be spelling <laughs> and nobody's going to be super overwhelmed so the other uh tip too that i want and that was actually the other tip use loop scheduling use loop scheduling for spelling vocabulary writing grammar pick one one a day to work on for about 20 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes it depends on your kids and what level you are 
Um, but use loop schedule for other things as well. And that's where I want to talk about. I'm um, going to focus on loop scheduling a lot. So another tip, take turns doing subjects like science, history, social uh, st studies. I almost said social security, social studies and geography. Uh, here we do science Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we do history on what, Mondays and Wednesdays. Okay. And then on Friday, as I said, it's fun Friday. We do other um, fun things like uh, poetry and arts and music and nature studies and things like that. You don't need to teach all subjects every single day. You can take, you know, two days a week to do science, two days a week to do history or one day a week. You know, maybe one day a week, you just go a little bit longer and you cover more. And instead of doing two days a week, that way you don't feel overwhelmed. Um, my next tip is keep your lessons short. Keep your lessons short. Your homeschool lessons don't have to last 40 minutes or an hour each one. They can last 15 minutes. They can last 10 minutes. Like our memory work lasts uh, less than 10 minutes every day and yet are very, very effective. So, hey, in 10 minutes, I can do spelling. In fact, I do recommend an amazing spelling program from IW called Spelling Zoo, Phonetic Zoo, something like that. That's all we use, and it's all audio, and the kids can do it on their own, too. <laughs> we even do it in the car, guys. It's, it's really awesome. But keep it short. Yes, that's exactly what Charlotte Mason says. Uh, Melanie, keep their attention span right there with you. Their attention span needs to be right there with you. That short lesson where they can pay full attention and they can work on perfect executing whatever they were told to do will be a lot more productive than the 40 minutes lesson where kids are like jumping over the sofa with your attention span all over the place, right? Do less, but do better. Do less, but do better. And you will accomplish much, much more. So the next tip that I have for you guys, so just going back, the non-negotiables, those are the things you have to do every single day. Um, if you can add a little bit of a morning basket or memory work to it, that's awesome. Read alouds every single day. If I cannot read, I use audiobooks. Um, for language arts, you know, think about it. It already includes handwriting. It already includes copy work. So don't add an extra book for it, okay? Don't You don't need to add an extra book for spelling, for copy work, for handwriting. It's all there when you do language arts anyways. Use a loop schedule so you don't have to do everything at once. Just do one day spelling, one day vocabulary, one day writing, one day grammar. Um, take turns doing subjects. You don't need to do every single subject every day. Pick like we do science twice a week history twice a week, never on the same days. That way your, your homeschool day is not too long and the kids are not too exhausted and their mind is all over the place because they just want to stop. Keep your lessons short. Use a loop schedule for all the other things that you really want your kids to learn. Like I know some of you guys, you're not Hebrew course. Take Fridays for Hebrew. Take Fridays for nature walks or nature study. Take Fridays for poetry tea time. Take Fridays for, you know, hymns. Like we do hymns as part of our memory work. But you, you can take a day of the week just for all of those fun things. And that's why we call it Fun Fridays because my kids look forward to Fun Friday. Um, number seven, outsource your homeschool. I talked about that yesterday, last night in the group. Guys, um, audiobooks are awesome, Michelle. A audiobooks are awesome. Um, I, 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 I'm a big fan of audiobooks. My kids love audiobooks and uh, actually has taught them to pay attention because the moment we pop a story in the car or in the house, there's not a pip. They are, they are listening. Um, full attention. But I want to, I want to get into outsourcing your homeschool. Don't be afraid of outsourcing your homeschool. Don't be afraid to do some uh, some of those um, courses online. Because I have times that I don't feel like I'm able to teach everything uh, to my kids. And I, like our math is done online. 
thank God for CTC math. <laughs> I don't have to teach my kids, which is the greatest thing I have ever done in our homeschool. Okay. That is the, like, the far greatest thing I have ever done for my homeschool was to handle math to CTC math. Let my kids go online and do it. And then they work on their books and their work uh, worksheets as well. But if there are subjects, if there are courses that they can sit down and they can watch and you can watch with them without you having to prepare and plan and read before, that's a huge relief for you. And that will remove a lot of overwhelmed. So one of the things that we did this year, and I did a video last night in our Blast Homeschool Moms Facebook group, our free Facebook group. And if you guys are not there yet, you want to be there because it is the best homeschool community I have ever been part of. Okay. I, I, I'm i not going to say that. Oh, it's my group. It's not my group. It belongs to 3,200 and almost, uh, you know, 3,000, almost 300 moms. And they are like 87% of them are highly active in that group. And it's just such a beautiful sisterhood. So much community, so much support, so much encouragement. It's just a blessing. So you want to be there. So last night I did this video and I showed to you guys, and maybe I can show you here quickly, but I use schoolhouseteachers.com. This is something new to our homeschool. We start doing this, if, I think like a month or so ago. And, and yesterday I was actually sharing how um, being in bed rest this week, how, you know, just just how wonderful it was for me to go online and search for courses that my kids could sit down and watch. You know, it was it was so helpful. There's like 430 something courses available for you. I only pay $10 a month for the membership, 1097 I think. Um there are some promos going on, but hey, it is huge. There is like even like musical instruments. There is drama. There is American history, world history. There is writing. There is there is all kinds of math for every single grade and for every single subject. There is everything there for you guys. I'll I'll share the link later on for you guys. But um, don't be afraid to outsource your homeschool if you're feeling if you're in a season. Okay. <laughs> And some of you have heard me saying this. I'm in my audiobooks and paper plate seasons right now. Okay. This is me. Not just because, uh, not because I'm overwhelmed. It's because, well, I'm launching a new membership group, which is called the Homeschool Sisterhood, which is amazing. And because of that, for the past almost four months, I've been spending hours taking a course uh, to prepare me for this membership so I can offer my community the best best support, the vast community, the best content, the best everything that they need in order to go from stress to blast, in order to go uh, from, you know, just being confused into finding clarity and really following a design um, success path, a roadmap, right, that will will do things like we're talking about today, remove overwhelm, find clarity, you know, know where to focus, how to focus, and, and uh, find confidence in what they're doing and, and master, master all of this. And, uh, and, the, and the ultimate goal is that, you know, you will create a restful homeschool. And this is what I have today. I have a restful homeschool. I'm in a place where I know my kids are learning a time and I don't have to do a time for them to learn a time. Okay. Does that make sense? So, yes, I will post the links. Oh, guys, you know what? Um, I forgot to say this, but if you want the notes, if you want the notes from uh, this workshop, just write notes on your comments. Just write notes and uh, let me know you want the notes and I'll send it to you. And then I'll send it to you, the links as well. I'll send it straight to your messenger. So that way you don't have to be looking for it here. Okay. So if you want the notes, just let me know. Just write notes there on the comments and I'll send it to you. So don't be afraid to outsource your homeschool. They're great online courses. Um, check out like music in our homeschool. Uh, like we do Shakespeare through Jana's course. We do, um, she just created a year of Charlotte Mason music. And that's what we're doing this year for music. And includes hymns and folk songs and um, hymns and folk songs classical music like all kinds of different music composers 
there's like four different composers that she focus on. Um, so that's what I'm doing for this year. Why reinvent the wheel when somebody else has done for you? <laughs> you know, it's like, and the course was like so cheap. I think she was selling it on sale for 40% off until a few days ago. But hey, if there's a good group in our community who wants to take advantage of um, this course, maybe we can ask Jenna for a special discount, right? All things are possible. We have faith here. <laughs> it is It is pretty cool. So, hey, Stephanie, shalom, shalom. All right, so I see everybody asking for the notes. That's awesome. All right, so let's go back here. More tips. And we are dying. And we are basically dying. Uh, and this is my last tip for you. And I know I, I've shared 10 tips with you guys, starting with the cluttering, removing all the excess, um, do less, focus on doing less, you know, focus on, on those important rocks that we talked about at the beginning. We talked about just doing the non-negotiable, make sure that you're doing the non-negotiable subjects every single day in your homeschool. We talked about loop scheduling. We talk about uh, taking turns with certain subjects so it's not overwhelming. We talked about fun Fridays. We talked about doing uh, short lessons. We talked about outsourcing our homeschool. And this is the last thing that I wanna, the last tip that I want to give it to you because I know that um, this is the best way to homeschool. This is the best way to create a, a restful homeschool um, for your family. And it is to create and follow a routine that naturally, organically weaves into your family natural rhythm of life. Okay. I'm, I'm going to explain this a little bit. So you want to create a routine that naturally, organically weaves into your family rhythm of life. And by that, I mean, if you just try to force a schedule over your children and try to do things in times that they are not used to do it, you're going to find resistance. And it's going to be tough. But when you add learning as part of your day, naturally, like we, like for us, we naturally get in the car, we put an audio book on. We naturally do spelling while we are driving as we put the CD on, you know, thanks to IW. We naturally do memory work in the morning or when we start our school. We naturally do memory work sometimes when we are driving as well. Our car has like a big bag of like uh, audiobooks and different things that we use for school. We naturally, you know, sit down the table and get language arts and math done. Okay, that's part of how we do it. So try to see what fits naturally to your family rhythm without forcing them and create a routine that it, it just seems seamless to your days. It makes a huge difference. Don't be caught up with times. Okay, because you can have a perfect routine in place without being caught up with time. Kids to know what's coming next and what is natural for them to do. Okay, for example, when you wake up in the morning, I hope you do this, but it's naturally for me that I make my bed, I change my clothes, I go to the bathroom, I brush my teeth, I come out, and I put on memory work with the kids while I'm making breakfast. And then we do Bible together. And it's like natural. I can do that like effortless, right? Effort, effortlessly. <laughs> I can just do that naturally because it's part of our family rhythm. So try to incorporate learning times into your family natural rhythm. Something that feels organic and it feels like it's, it's just right. It works just right for your family. Okay, most important thing, you guys, your family is unique. Your homeschool is unique. And you can cater to it. You can have a custom-made education and experience for your family that nobody else is going to be able to create for you. You know them better than I do. <laughs> you know what they like to do better than I do. So just try to, you know, think about what are the ways that they learn and what are the things that they love 
and uh, how how is your family like what what like like are you a tacky family are you an outdoors family you just love to be outside just try to feed your your routine your learning routine into all of those things into your your lifestyle right and and um just your natural family rhythm it works beautifully all right you guys i am gonna say goodbye because this was supposed to be a 30 minutes video and end up being 54 minutes video already so eric is saying we do k to 12. i really had no idea how to plan a curriculum so i went through k-12 every day we have four subjects for ella ela one math science and history alternate as well as art and music Erica, as you're brand new to homeschooling, and as you get more and more comfortable, and you will find that uh, you will find more confidence to pick what works best for your family. You will see the the natural changes happening this year. I know that you just had like your first semester homeschooling, but you will see this year you're more in tune. Like, what do my children like to learn? How they learn? It's very important, you guys. Um, what are their learning styles? What is it that they're really interested in learning? And then you will come up with ideas to implement those things into their homeschool. So you'll see that. You love the idea of loop scheduling and working on basics for the week. How do I do that through this? Good question. Because um, you're working through a system that you need to log in and you need to do what they tell you to do, right? So that might be a little bit tricky. That might be a little bit tricky. I'm not sure because I have never used the system. So I'm not sure. If you want to shoot me a message, we can chat. Um, and and maybe you can screenshot me, like just take some screenshots and send it to me so I can see how the system works. Maybe we can figure it out a way. Be glad to help. Um, Kim is saying thank you. Love you, Kim. Love you girls. Like this, this sisterhood is so amazing. I love, 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 love you guys. Um, big, big thing too. I have not talked about that today. Maybe a little bit about the uh, the habit of attention. But make formation of habits and character training a must every day in your homeschool. Okay? Formation of habits and character training a must. Your kids need to know how to pay attention. They need to know how to be obedient if you want your homeschool and your house to run smoothly. That is huge, you guys. The moment that you see your kids saying yes, ma'am, and doing what you told them to do and paying attention to your instructions or paying attention to the instructions in the book or whatever is asked of them, and they are really putting the full focus of their mind and what they have in their hands instead of being distracted, is a game changer is life changing life changing and you're gonna thank god for it <laughs> your entire life okay because i see homeschool parents struggling every day with kids that don't obey them that don't respect them that don't want to do what they're told to do so work on that every single day diligently consistently as your life depends on it because it does and their lives depend on it okay so work on the formation of good habits and character training every single day life-changing love you guys if you have any questions put it in the comments and i'll reply to you as soon as i can if you want the notes again oh you want to know what i use for uh habit training character training This saved my life. It's called Laying Down the Rails. I have the handbook. I've watched the DVD. I have both of the children's book. And I have the adult ones too. <laughs> saved my life. Right now in our house, we're working through self-control. Self-control. But we started with those habits. There's three habits that I, I talked about it um, at the Charlotte Mason Conference. Attentiveness, obedience, and perfect execution. Everything that they want, that I want them to do, I want them to pay full attention. 
I want them to be obedient and follow what they were, you know, the instructions they received. And by that means, when I ask them to do something as yes, men right now, not talk back, not question, not tell me they don't want to do it. Okay. Otherwise it's not obedience and perfect execution. Whatever I put myself into doing, I'm going to do my best. Those were like top, those are my top three, uh, top, top truth, top three. <laughs> and now we're working through self-control. Um, but there's, there's there's order there's cleanliness there's um memorizing we are working through this we're actually working through formation of habits inside the homeschool sisterhood if you guys have not signed up for the waiting list yet guys okay i'm gonna give you the link right now because i know i'll forget hopefully not but let me tell you to do this as a community every month having one focus that we all work with our children together is so much better and it makes so much easier so much easier so if you guys want to know more about the homeschool sisterhood you can go and you can sign up for the waiting list we just closed our founding members offer and we have 127 homeschool moms and mentors in this group and we are opening up for everyone to sign up not that you know you're everyone but we are opening up officially the membership july 22nd to 25 to 25th okay so just repeat that with me july 22nd to 25 don't miss that okay july 22nd to 25 that's the only chance you can sign up for the homeschool sisterhood it's only going to be 15 dollars a month and we're going to focus on formation of habits every month formation of a habit so we are working towards attention um obedience self-control memorizing remembering um order all of those things then <clears throat> you get formation of habits you're going to get master classes you're going to get guest speakers we're going to bring in experts and we're going to do interviews uh, live q a's with them we have book clubs for moms and book clubs for children book clubs for moms so we're always growing we're always learning together we always and we're starting with mother culture from karen androla and the kids book clubs they are going to see each other live on zoom and they're going to discuss what they're learning and the story and why they love it and why they don't and we're going to get them excited about reading and i can't wait and i'm i'm trying to you know just grab my friend the shell to help us with some cool ideas for book clubs because she's the queen of book clubs okay so they're going to do this together we're going to grow together we're going to do habit training together we're going to have a master class we're going to have a expert expert pouring into that specific topic of the month into our lives so we can have the accountability and the consistency of working towards that and because this is not enough right this is not enough there's a lot more and it's so much better and bigger than we think we're going to have family workshops so you, you and your kids are going to have live online classes once a month, working on a project together. It could be cooking, it could be writing, it could be arts, it could be Spanish, it could be Hebrew, it could be like once a month, we're going to have this huge event, online event, where the whole families will come together and they're going to learn, they're going to take this family workshop together and they're going to work on this project together. And this is going to be so exciting. So, so exciting. So, yeah. So, if you have not signed up for the waiting list, go ahead and sign up for the waiting list because you're only going to have four days to sign up. After that, we're going to close. We're only going to reopen. We're only reopening at the end of January. So, only twice a year, the membership is going to be open. And that is for a really good reason. One, I'll be mentoring. This community, alongside with other mentors in our community, who are just amazing, you guys, amazing. We are going to follow that design success path, that design roadmap that I talked to you guys about. 
this is not a lose membership. You go there, like pick something to do one this month. No, there's a purpose and a reason for every single topic, every single stage from beginning to end. And it is to bring you into a restful homeschool. Okay, it's to bring you to that place of clarity, of uh, consistency, of um, being, uh, can I have all my, com my consistency, confidence, right? All those places that you're, you know, we've been lacking somehow. So at, at the end, there's no end to this membership, but I'm saying at the end of that first cycle of the roadmap, man, you're going to have so much clarity and so much confidence and so much, um, you know, understanding and wisdom. And, and we are working. I know the group just sounds amazing. It does. And it is amazing. And that's why I've been working so hard in this past four months hours a day taking those classes putting together everything because it is a lot of work but it's so worthy it's so rewarding so even like our book clubs we are going to do like in a whole year we're going to do a cycle where we are covering okay ministering to ourselves our marriage our parenting and our homeschool oh and our relationship with god sorry so it's ourselves our marriage our kids in our homeschool and our relationship with God. So by the time that you finish that first cycle of a year, you have invested in your growth and your spiritual growth and your mental growth and your emotional growth and your homeschool growth, right? In, in your abilities to be productive and be more organized and, and not feel overwhelmed. So it's pretty amazing. All right. I've been talking for over an hour, you guys. I love you. I love you. I'm going to say goodbye. So now my hubby's coming home soon too. Love you. I pray for you. I praise God for you. And I'm here for you. Anytime you need anything, just let me know. Write down the comments if you need the notes. And I'll send it to you right away as soon as I finish here. Bless you. Bye.